Don't let what you're good at define who you are. Who are you if you can't do what you're good at? That was the change of everything for me. Coming into the pandemic, coming into COVID, yeah, I was a barber. Still am a barber, but I was a barber by occupation, right? Like, that was all I did. That was all I felt I was good at. That was my gift from God. I'm so grateful for it, too, at the time. Like, yo, yes, I'm the best barber out here. I'm cutting all the rappers. I'm cutting all the celebrities. It's lit. This is what I'm going to be known for. This is what I wanted. And the moment where the one thing that you thought you were good at and that you thought you brought value to the world for got taken away from you. No more human contact, right? The one thing I do to, you know, create this business and to even eat, like I can no longer do. Now, you know, you're sitting at the house and you're thinking, you know, who is Victor Fonson as if I can never cut hair again? So it put me into, I wouldn't say it put me into a, a, into a worry, but it put me into a realization of where like, you know, maybe it's not a pandemic, but God forbid I'm in a crash one day or an accident and my hands aren't there or they're not the same and I can't fade the same way or I can't cut or what if that is gone from, from, from my personality? What if that's like taken away? Like, who am I really? That was the question I had to ask myself. Like, who is Victor Fontanez? If I can never cut hair again. Not a lot of people know, like I wanted to speak before I came to Atlanta. I just didn't think that uh, anybody wanted to hear it from me, nor did I think that I looked the part or sounded the part as, as somebody that could be an inspiration. I was just admiring motivational speakers on YouTube all the time and listening to them all the time thinking like, damn, like that's cool, but I'm the barber, you know, like it is what it is. And then um, I, I tried to do it and it didn't, it didn't work, you know, people, People heard it, it went in one ear out the other, and that's how I took it. You know, people told me to shut up and continue to cut hair, and and I did that. I did that exact thing. I stopped pursuing the thing that I felt I wanted to do because the one thing I'm good at is, is, is what the world expects from me, and I'm going to continue to do that. So a uh, pandemic came. I can no longer cut hair. You know, my voice is something that doesn't require anybody to be around for I could, I could put the camera up right now and continue to speak. And I could create a video right now that could touch more people than a fade can do. So when I started speaking during the pandemic and I saw a small impact uh, at a moment of time where I felt a lot of people really needed a voice, it just started opening up the vision for me to see that, like, man, maybe me speaking can be a thing. Maybe that is something that the world might want from me. Uh, it started with a couple of people saying, yo, I appreciate this. Slowly but surely, more people started you know, appreciating the content, the videos that I was putting out. And then I felt the guilt uh, for wanting to only speak um, and not really using the gift that God gave me, right? Because I feel gifted as, as, as a barber and to have the talent I have. But I felt wrong to to confuse, like, right, like passion and purpose. That's the two things is like what we're passionate about and what our purpose is actually here. Like, I love to do this, but I'm here to do this. And I was conflicted between the two and felt guilty to not utilize the gift that God gave me to be a great barber uh, in a way that helps me fulfill purpose. So instead of chasing celebrities, instead of chasing fame through people I would cut or types of cuts I would do, I was like, man, let me, let me give a stranger a haircut. I want to change the way that people see other people. And that, I think, is my life goal. And my whole reason for being here on this earth is to change the perspective of how we see others. So to give a stranger a haircut to me is to show love to their neighbor, right? To show love to the people around you every day, to uplift your own community. Uh, a lot of times I think the answers too that we look for are in front of us the whole time, right? The access we think we need to special talents or gifts or knowledge, it lives around you every day with the people you walk past, but our assumption is that it's in LA or it's in New York or it's across the, the globe and we just don't have it yet because our community sucks so bad, right? Like that's our mentality all the time. But to really love thy neighbor is a statement that I, that I, that I live by. And I make sure that when I speak to these people outside on these streets, like I want to know what it is that makes us connect because I truly believe that there's something that we all possess inside that we've gone through that allow us to relate to people without 
them looking like us, sounding like us, or being interested in even the same things that we're interested in. But like the human experience has so many emotions that we all relate to. And um, I love strangers. What can I say? It's not even when you become famous or you become viral. When you create any sense of value for yourself, you lose this sense of genuineness for interactions that come forward. You don't have to be famous, but once you hold a certain amount of value for yourself and people compete that, you never really know what they're approaching you for. And that's the scary thing that puts people into defense naturally. Um, they say it's lonely at the top, and that's a real thing because the amount of pain that you have to go through to get to the top, uh, it hurts you as a person. And some people, they don't deal with that trauma of hurt to get there as best as they should. And naturally, you're in this like, you're like, you push away people that try to walk in your life. Uh, and it gets weird because people will come up and you just expect like, like they've always had for your whole life. Like, yo, they're coming to check up on me. And it goes from like, yo, Vic, how, you've, how have you been doing to, by the way, I got this thing I'm launching. I would love for you to do this or that. And you're like, man, you know, are these people really here for me or are they here for what, for what I can do? And um, it's funny, I heard baby say, uh, they always ask me how it feels and never ask me how I feel. Uh, and it could get tricky, man. So like sometimes with the interactions, like, you know, you can feel it. Like someone's coming up to you and they're trying to make something set, shake. And um, as a person, like, I want to tell everybody yes. I want to tell everybody yes. I want to, I want to take in every opportunity. I want to, I want to hear everything out. And, and, and I do so. And then you got to get put into a guilt where it's like it's, it's one of me. And sometimes people could, could, can't forget that when they approach you that, you know, you're just human. I am figuring it out as I'm going on how to really be the most genuine and loving and giving person with boundaries at the same time of what I can give out and what I can take in. So I'll figure it out. Confident, I'll figure it out. Confident, God to give me everything I need to, to, to create a balance for this, but it's really hard when your heart is in the right place and you know your brain says that you can't. But that's the battle. My heart will let me show love to everybody, shout out everybody's stuff, taking everybody's things, pull up to everybody's event. My heart would say yes. But logistically, you know, just being real, it, it's, it's impossible. It's, it's absolutely impossible to do so. Even with a DM. Like, I wish I could, uh, you know, express it enough to, you know, every supporter out there that I would love to message everybody back. And I think that's what, man, I, I'm like, I feel like I want to cry right now thinking about it. Because people are really putting their heart into, like, a message that they would send me. And damn, I wish I could be messaging back sometimes. And I can. I, I can but it's hard because you can't because I would spend my whole day in my phone. And for me to accomplish and, like, take care of my family and my girl and do the things I have, I just can't DM everybody back. And I'd be feeling guilty, man, because some people say some real shit to me in the DMs. And I respond to as many as I can. I can't get to everybody because mathematically it doesn't make sense. But that's one thing I'd be like, damn, I wish I could do that. Because people really need me. I fucking love people and I love that people love me. And I wish I could really give everybody that love. And I wish people understood that it's very hard to do so mathematically. The amount of time it would take to message everybody back. And I wish people could feel me on that. And give me some grace too. And uh, that's a balance that I, I have to figure out.